it's Ryan Matt Borden, aka Loopline. Hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'm going to cover the new screenshot creator add on by Scrapebox. So, if you don't have it installed, you can go to add ons, show available add ons, and then find the screenshot creator once the list loads up here. Uh, it's right here. You go to install add on, or if you need to update it, of course, at some point you can update it, or you can just choose to click this box and update all add-ons and that will actually install all add-ons if you have that box checked. If you want to go that route, once it's installed, you go here and we go to the screenshot creator and we launch it. Now what the screenshot creator does is pretty much like it sounds, it takes a snapshot of a web page. So you can load in a list of URLs here and we get from file or from Scrapebox and we'll do that in just a moment. And then it can capture a screenshot and we have some options. Options on the width is browser width or custom width, whatever you want, browser height, page height, or custom height. So browser height is basic and custom height is basic. Page height is going to be like the whole web page. So even if you have to scroll down, that'll be that. Um, to give scripts a chance to load, you may need to give it some extra time because Scrapebox can run really fast, faster than um, the web page may even load or your internet or your computer can even handle. So generally this is a good idea. It starts at 5. I would just leave it at 5 and try it. You may need to go more, 10, 15, 20, depending on if you have um, a slow internet connection or you're loading really big web pages or they have lots of content, like if they have lots of pictures or that website's web server happens to be slow, etc. So you can test it out and see how it works. Then obviously you need a place to save them, so pretty basic. Um, this is just a basic file dialog. And then we can save images to a domain-based folder. So that, like if we're scraping from scrapebox.com and then scrapeboxfact.com, it'll put all of the screenshots of Scrapebox uh, URLs in the scrapebox.com folder and then all of the URLs for scrapeboxfact.com in a scrapeboxfact folder. And so we'll also look at that in a moment. And then we get to choose how we want to name the file. So we can prefix it with whatever we want, um, a project name, some random numbers, letters, something that means something to you, whatever you want. And then you also get other things that you can tack on there like um, a month, day, year, day, month, year, hours, minutes, seconds, or just an incrementing number starting at one and going up. Um, and then, so let's say we do want to use month, day, year, and then the second part we want to be the time, and then the third part we want to be a number. You know, we can do that. Obviously parts two and three are optional, hence the optional part here. Then we get to choose if we want JPEG or PNG. And this is kind of like what it'll look like. So it's, we can see day, month, year right here, and then the time right here, and then our number. If we put this to nothing, that goes away. Again, we can do that, and that goes away. Um, but we have to choose something here just because it has to know what you want to name these, like what naming convention you want to use. So I'm just going to go basic and we just do a number, for example. And so that's that. We can open the target folder after we're done capturing and that'll open the folder where all these images are saved. Um, obviously we have a start button and then an exit button. So let me pause the video for a moment and load up some URLs and we will just give it a go. So I have just a few URLs loaded in here. And um, I'm going to choose browser width and browser height, just leaving it at the default there. And then let's start the capture and let it grab all of these things. And then once it grabs them, we'll have a look at the actual screenshots that it has taken so we can see that. And we'll try the other options so you can see what it is. And so we can see it actually loads the web pages here where you can see them. And it gives us a stop option. It's currently all done. So we're just going to click go back. And then we're going back to here. We're going to open the target folder. And here it is. And everything's just saved in one folder, so we can just have a quick look at them. And it is, see, just, sorry, I'm rolling through them. Um, that is the browser height that it used. Now, that, bear in mind, this is using its own Scrapebox browser. So, like, for example, if I look at that image, and then I go on my 2K resolution screen and look at the same image, it's not going to be necessarily the same. See so, you how know, this is wider? Right now, we're recording in HD, so you can only see part of my screen which is what 1K, right? So I'm at 1K width on this browser. Scrapebox is using its own browser, but really what it's doing is it's just cutting off the extra gray area. That's fluff anyway. So you can see the, the difference here. And then if we roll over to that same page here, you get the whole same thing. So you don't have to worry about whatever your browser is set up as, whatever you're using um, on your computer, whether it's Firefox or Chrome or Safari or you know whatever else. Uh, it doesn't matter, Scrapebox has its own. And so that is how it's basing it. And so that's your screenshots there. Now let's go back and we will have a quick look. We're gonna do a domain-based folder so we can see what that does. And then we're just gonna do page height. Browser width, I'm gonna leave just because I, 
let it adapt to most pages are responsive and are going to adapt to whatever that's set for in your browser and then um, let's do a different a little different naming convention here we'll stick the day month year and then maybe the time on there just for the sake of it and then uh, start this capture and it actually will load up these pages here and go through them and we can see it counting through right here we could stop it if we wanted to and then when it's done we'll hit go back here so that finished pretty quick I'm gonna hit go back and now we're going to go ahead and open the target folder and we can see it created domain based folders for our two scrapebox.com and scrapeboxfact.com and if we go into scrapebox.com we have our two images you can see they're very tall versus these other ones are just the browser what you see like what they call above the fold in a browser so that's what this initial was if you do this browser browser height that would be like whatever's above the fold if you want to you know refer to it that way whereas um, page height is the whole page like if you were scrolling so for scrapebox.com we see this giant page and of course we can zoom in you know and that sort of thing but it's just really long page but we get the whole the whole shebang so we can do you know see the whole thing in one screenshot and same thing would be with the next one if we do um, you know this one obviously is the same which is just the plugins page on scrapebox.com. We can see the whole thing, get all the information. And if we wanted to go back, we could look at the Scrapebox FAC website. And it again is the same thing where we can see the whole page in there. So that's kind of the basic options. This is version 1.0.0.0. So they may add new features, you know, like some different saving options or whatever down the track of course but and so that's the basics of the screenshot creator if you having issues with it a couple of things that I would check is one if you're doing custom height or custom width here you know check those because that may or may not work out for you depending on the page itself and you can experiment with that also if you are having trouble with like things not looking right or not loading all the way try increasing your delay you could decrease the delay of course and go with it try it maybe like one or two or three seconds but again that delay would be the first thing I would do with troubleshooting based on all sorts of things can cause a slow connection including nothing that's your fault at all you might have the fastest internet and fastest machine in the world on in a data center and you might be connecting to an ultra slow website on two dollar hosting and it's just gonna take a minute to load so that's just how it is also as of the time of this version which is 1.0.0.0 proxies are not used you don't need proxies it's just a web browser that's what the end website sees it so if you're going to cars.com the reason cars.com exists is so you can view it in a web browser they want you to view it that's why they built the web page and put it on a web server and this is a web browser and that's what it's seen as and so they want you to look at that website so you do not need proxies because all websites exist to be seen so all it's doing is loading it and it is single connection so there's no connections control right here because of the way the web browser works if we try to get into multi-threading tons of things then you're just going to have more issues with things loading so it is single threaded at least at the time of this version and it just works and it works well and it does what it's supposed to do and that is the scrapebox screenshot creator add-on thanks for watching this scrapebox video for more scrapebox videos click the subscribe button down below and then click the bell and then check out these other great Scrapebox videos.